Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a bit of a rematch between Terror and Reach here on Outsider. And yeah, you guys liked Reach, so I found another replay with him rematching against Terror. And it's a Carbot skin, and it's a requested green skin for the Zerg player. All right, so bottom side of Outsider, we have the green Zerg player. It is Terror. And on the left side of the map, we've got a purple Protoss player. It is Reach, who not only is the most conventionally handsome player in Brood War of all time, I think, but he also is an incredible Protoss player. I'm excited to see what he's got today, how he's going to handle Terror, who is a terrorizing Zerg player. He is aptly named. Hmm. All right, so a while ago, somebody said, hey, I like Carbot a lot. Next time you cast Carbot, can you find one where uh, Zerg has chosen the color green? Because I want to see green Zerglings. And I was like, okay, here we go. And I found one. And it's Terror versus Reach. So, hey, two birds with one stone. Or maybe three birds with one stone here. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. If you don't know who Carbot animation is, then, hey, search YouTube for Carbot. And you will see... Excellent animations, funny animations for all of Blizzard's properties. Diablo, Warcraft 3, Starcraft, Starcraft Brood War. And you'll come to appreciate him as I have done. And yeah, in case you're wondering, what the heck is this? This is an overpool, by the way. In case you're wondering what this is, it's just a Carbot skin that Blizzard commissioned Carbot to do for Starcraft Brood War. And I think he did a really good job. He's a super nice guy. He's a very talented person, and yeah, welcome to a very cute edition of StarCraft Brood War today. <laughs> Are you going to block it? You're going to block it? You're going to block it. All right, this is super duper annoying stuff. And although, hang on, hang on. Oh, no, the block is real. Ah, he did it again. We've seen this before. We've seen this out of Zerg players, not in this particular game. But we've seen it where the Zerg player on this map has just thrown up the hatch wherever. Screw it, he says. I'd rather not get this thing delayed. I don't have an easy third base to get to in case the natural one is blocked, which is why this is a map that Protoss players kind of like against Zerk. So I'm just going to toss it up here. And sure, my gas is terrible. I can throw up another hatch at another time, but at least I'll have some mineral income right now, and it's close to home, and it's easy to defend. Look, it's another double gate opening here from Reach. This is what he did in the first game against Terror on this map. It's different spawn locations. So it's not the exact same game. I was a little bit worried about that. I was like, Terror versus Reach on Outsider. What is this? No, no, no. Different spawn locations, different Smurf names involved here too. But uh, at this stage, I mean, if you're, if this happened chronologically after the Reach game that Terror played last time, then he has to know what's happening. But this is so much a carbon copy. Look, the Lings move out from Terror. He's planning to get some stuff done. There's Zealots all ready to rock for Reach. And there aren't enough lings to kill these zealots. It's close, but all these lings will die and maybe kill one of the zealots, possibly two, but depending on the micro involved. So he has to go home. He's like, look, I'll just throw up the hatch here. Yeah, see, that's what we're talking about. More lings coming out right now. I mean, it's 10 drones to 18 probes. This is why early aggression with Zerg is tough. It's why it's so hard to pull off. Look, probes are coming across here too. I'm having some serious deja vu. Is this all that Reach does? He is known as being a very aggressive Protoss player and very, very good as well. And somebody who has given Jadong fits in the past. Nice surround, beautiful surround there. And a probe goes down. All right. So Terror is handling this better in this game than he was in the first game I cast between these two players. I'm not going to say anything else. If you didn't watch my Terror versus Reach game that I cast a couple weeks ago, check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description. Maybe I'll put a little um, card up in the top right you guys can click on. Because, holy crap, it's such a good game. It is one of the better games I've ever cast. Uh, isn't this... Outsider is freaking me out at the moment. Isn't there a way... Oh, that's a ramp. Okay, this didn't look like a ramp to me in the car bot. Okay, so that's a ramp down. You come up this side, and then you can expand this direction, etc. So the probe got in through here by basically sticking himself into this corner, putting up a pile on, getting pushed through the minerals that way, kind of glitching through... I'm not sure if it's something that Blizzard necessarily banned on this map, but I haven't really cast a lot of official official tournament games on this map. It's really just been ladder stuff, which I think is one of one of these games are. But I mean, these guys are trying hard. This is not because this is not a just because this is not a tournament game. Tournament game <laughs> doesn't mean they're not playing as hard as they can. Sunken up here just in case the zealots decide to be aggressive. 
and bam, 20 drones. There we go. So we spent some time droning after we killed that first zealot and the first probe. Felt pretty good about himself. Expanding behind this is the Protoss player, Reach, who again, pretty cool looking dude. Like, he doesn't look like your traditional esports gamer. He looks more like a, I don't know, a soccer player or a football player or something. Anyway, Reach is fun. Glad I was able to find more, especially between Terror. Because again, that first game was great. Check it out if you haven't already. Look at all these zealots. You kind of have to attack with these, right? You can't just sit back and do nothing. There was a bit of a window there where I feel like these zealots could have taken all of this down, including this handful of links and the one sunken. The second sunken changes the equation quite a bit here, though. Makes me worry for the zealots a little bit harder. There's only eight of them. They really haven't gotten any damage done at all here. If they've killed a couple lings, sure. But they lost a whole zealot. They lost a whole probe. And he basically just was forced to leave Terror alone to macro up like he's been doing. He's at 27 workers now to 25 probes. Sure, the second base is coming in for the Protoss, and that's great for him. But third base coming up now for Terror. Again, it's a minerals-only style situation, which is not ideal. Like, he'd rather it not be that, but whatever. It's fine. This is a map with a lot of gas. You just have to know where to find it. And it's not easy to get to is the problem with Zerg. Can't really... It's harder to do that trick to glitch through because you don't have pylons you can toss up in the middle of nowhere. But I have seen it done before with drones and... Like, hydras? Something along those lines. Look at this line of zealots. Look at this. The lings go for the run by. You can do it, guys. Come on. Zhoof. Just slip right around the outside. No, no, say the Zerglings. It's like a one-to-one -one scenario here. That is a full eight Zealots versus 12 Zerglings. The numbers don't match up. It's about four Lings per Zealot in a straight-up engagement. Depending on Micro involved, you can do more with fewer Zerglings or more with fewer Zealots, but still. It's just not a good situation for the Zerg player to be in, even at all. Corsairs are out here in the Carbot skin, trying to see what's what. There's a Spire coming in right now, and there's no Hydralisk den, so these Overlords are at the mercy of this Corsair for at least another about 25-30 seconds right now, because that Spire's going to finish, and then you have to make some Scourge. The Corsair, I'm not sure if it's interested in actually killing anything as much as it is just scouting. It's like, okay, so there is no Hydralisk den. This is basically going to be Mutalisks, and it is. It's nine Mutalisks in production right now. Crikey, mate. A second Stargate gets produced. He really is going to go for these Corsairs hard right now. Reach. Reach. Doing the things. Third base done for Terror. And for a long time, Terror didn't really lose many matches on the channel. So he has become a bit of a fan favorite that way. Which is not to say he's never lost. I will tell you, I have cast Terror lost before. At least one. So if you go back to watch more Terror games, like just keep in mind, he doesn't win all of them, because that's not very fun. You don't want to cast a player who just wins every single game all the time that you ever cast. Even Flash. Even Flash, Bisu, Jadong have lost games on this channel without question. So the Mutas are trying to do stuff, but again, the Corsairs are out. And we've seen this kind of work before a little bit for the Mutalisk player, but not here. Not when there are three Corsairs and we're double pumping them off double Stargate. If it was like one or two or three Corsairs, sure, I feel better about that, but man... It is turning into four Corsairs. It is going to turn into six Corsairs. The number is increasing exponentially. Not exponentially. It's very logarithmic. Oh, he did the thing. Logarithmically. Do you have to? I think you just can do it with another drone. You just push him through. Like, maybe you build a sunken? I've seen it before. I just don't remember how the trick is done. It's only been done once on the channel. But, yeah. These mutas? Uh-uh. Look at this. He's trying to split... I mean, he's trying to split his Mutas, but the obliteration of the Mutalisk flock is at hand. And suddenly, Terror is in a bad position. It's officially a bad position right now. His Mutalisk Gambit was terrible. I don't think he killed any probes at all. Maybe one or two in the opening volleys, but that's it, man. That's all they wrote. So the Mutalisk's ton of investment here. Finally, a Hydral Hydralisk then is coming up and is done. Getting upgrades here for Terror. He's got two gas rolling. He's going to have access to a couple more gas down here, which is awesome sauce. Handful of Mutas still around, but all of them in varying stages of injury because they've taken hits from the Corsairs at this point. I think he's done. I think he's done making Hydralisks, or Mutalisks to be my case. It's the era of the Hydralisk now. Scourge trying to get some hits off. I mean, not great. I don't think that was super great. We are still looking at six Corsairs flying around out here. 
And all the muters are gone. I think that was the sound of all the mutalisks dying. And again, the error of the Hydra has arrived. Working on shuttle movement, working on reavers to deal with these hydralisks. He's already got one out right now. Oh, jeez. I mean, if you see a reaver defending and all you're attacking with is lings, just get out. Just don't even engage. Don't do it, man. Did he just how to get these zealots? Oh, a shuttle. Because he has a shuttle. All right, so these zealots are waiting for this hatchery to finish, and then they're going to kill it. Because there's really not much that Terra can do to stop that from happening, right? Maybe if he gets a uh, drop lord. Maybe if he gets the, the upgrade for that. But I don't see it in production. I haven't seen it come through here. It'd be pretty early for that upgrade, to be honest with you. He does have the lair, but... Yeah, look at this. He's waiting. Okay, hatchery is done. Creeps spreading out. Zealots jump in. This is so brutal. From Reach. Yeah, what a boss. What a great, great Protoss player he is. I'm sad I didn't find him until recently, but I'll take it. Ooh, three drones down. Ugh, Hydralisk down. Ugh, four Hydralisks down. Ooh. Yeah, the Reaver died. He probably paid for himself, though, I'd say. That was pretty pretty cost-efficient. Third base down. Or rather, fourth base down. Not the third base. But that's where all the gas was. That's what the gas the Terror needs is. Ling's jumping in here, but really mostly kind of suiciding to their deaths. They didn't even get that one cannon. Terror feels completely outclassed in this game. He just does. He is not doing super well. He's not doing the Terror things that he normally does. Getting early damage in there. Getting the perfect composition to deal with what the Rotos player is up to. No. Not at all. Reach has discombobulated him at every step. With the early zealot pressure that didn't turn into pressure and was just defense completely shutting down his early attempt to get Lings across the map uh, for Terror. I mean, he's got a third or a fourth base coming up on the right side, but again, there's no gas over here. Terror is being gas starved in this game. This is nuts. Finally, Ventral Sacks coming in. Tons of hiders are out, but guess who just is making Reavers? Making Reavers all the live long day here, including shuttles. Making scarabs for those. I, I don't see it, man. I don't see how Terror wins this game at all. Hmm, I really haven't even brought up the green Zerglings that were requested. I've been so enthralled with this game thus far. But a green Zergling guy, I hope you are appreciative of the green Zerglings that I found for you. I'm going to tell you, the first seven or eight games I looked at that were Zerg were not green. It doesn't tell me what the colors of the players are inside the just the replay browser inside the client. So uh, I had to load up a whole bunch and find them. And I did. I did it for you, which just goes to show. Okay, one Corsair goes down. That's a decent win there. But I, I love you guys. I do. I appreciate the support. I love that you're here. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this game so far because I'm having a great time. Look at that, like, petrified Zerg abomination there on the ground. Made his own doodads, too, did Carbot. Great, dude. Again, have I mentioned that? Storm's on the way. I mean, it's Reavers and it's Storm. And... If you have enough Hydras, and you have good enough control in the Hydras, you can do this. But it's really, really elite level control that you need here. Is Terror capable of it? I believe he is. Can he do it here? I don't know. I don't know if he has it in him right now. It's just... It's incredible how ahead in this game Reach is. Sure, he doesn't have as many workers, that's fair. But his gas income is two, uh, assim or two assimilators. Ah, DTs are over here as well. Ah, the DT Corsair at 13 minutes. Nobody expects the DT Corsair at 13 minutes. This has been some of the most effective harassment and just shutting down of Zerg bases I've ever seen. Bam. DT shut down the fourth base. Terror is back on three bases where he was five minutes ago. He's been completely reset economically. Here comes the Doom Drop, though. The Doom Drop of Democles. <laughs> Yes, this is how you do. This is what Terror does. You go where the Reavers are not. You go where the Storm is not. You go where the cannons are not really. And you shut that base down. Nice. A nice bit of revenge. Coming up this ramp, I would say, is probably a mistake. <laughs> the Storm-Reaver combo. Yes, the Reaver dies, but the Hiders getting up that ramp is not going to be a good time in the least. Is there a, there's a 400... That's a big dumbbell sitting up there. Somebody's been lifting some serious weights in that Nexus. Alright, Singularity Charge coming in. I love that he puts penguins on the uh, the like the lava tile set. The Ursodon, for some reason, is a penguin out here. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if you're getting out of here, man. All these over... Oh my gosh, the supply block, though. Oh. Uh, terror. Actually, he's not supply blocked. But he is down 20 supply. Which is not great for him at all. Alright. 
So losing your third base as the two basing Protoss is bad, but he's got another base up to the top here that I'm not even sure Terror knows exists. Terror's trying to replant his fourth base. Zealots on this side, they've been here for some time, and they're just trying to make sure it's not easy to expand in this area. I support it. I support it immensely. Plus one attack on those dudes, one one on the Hydras. I think they can kill this drone if they jump on it fast enough. The Corsairs are just shutting down further drop attempts from Terror. That first drop attempt was incredible for Terror. It shut down that third base hard. Another base coming up here. Oh, but the, but the, but the uh, one o'clock spawn position's natural location. That's some exciting stuff. Okay. So the drone is alive. Terra can try to re-expand over in this direction. Third base is coming back in for reach. 11 o'clock base is happily mining right now. It's just economically, Reach is disgustingly ahead at the moment. He's got a ton of Dragoons out that aren't going to trade super well with the Hydras, but, you know, they're not horrifically bad. I, I mean, there are still a ton of Zealots in here. There's a bunch of High Templar. There's an Archon even. Just to deal with any number of Lings that might show up here, that Overlord is going to die. He does kind of scout. There was a shuttle in this area, though, and it's a bit of a poke out from Reach. Oh, what a good game this is. I am having so much fun casting recently. I don't know what it is. I've just cast a whole ton of incredibly fun Brood War games. I guess it helps if you find the right players, you know? Like, getting Reach added to the repertoire of players that I'm familiar with has been really good. New blood. New blood it is. All right. So this natural that we talked about earlier is dead for terror. But the hiders are trying to shut down this... 11 o'clock base of reaches too. Plus that double gas is coming up. Not super well defended. There's like two. There's literally two hydralisks here. Uh, he's trying to unload on these cannons. The overlords are all going to die. But I think all the cannons might be dead here too. Just hey look. The green zerglings are present. And they're getting obliterated by these reavers. Oh. Reavers getting shut down though. They were brought up to try to do something here. Hi Templar. Blech. I think he just popped out of that gateway and he's toast. Dude, Terror! Terror might get his revenge here on losing so many of his other bases. He's going to lose another, just kill another Nexus. That belongs to the Protoss player. Hang on, hang on. Can he get it? I think he can. He needs to focus it down, though. Yes, he has enough hiders over here to focus things down and kill it with a plus one attack, especially. Probes are running for their lives over in the left side of the map. The Nexus explodes in the blue ball of flame. Corsair over this way. I keep expecting to see a shuttle. There is a shuttle down this way. Okay. Who's going to drop Zealots down this way and go after this base again? Yeah, Hydra versus Zealot is not actually great. Oh, they've mined through. So defense is easier. Whoa! The storm drop combo, though. The wombo combo. Getting stuff done. This is a game. This might just get an epic tag. This has been a fantastic back and forth between these two players. Yes, it looks like Reach is up, but Reach's economy is not as healthy as it once was. Terror's is not as healthy as it wants to be at the 18-minute mark as a third player. So that's why it's a good game. Nobody is super comfortable at this stage right now. The Hydra Link, great, except for the Storm. It's really good against this here Zealot Dragoon style, but the High Templar Storm is the great equalizer, as it always has been. Finally going for Adrenal Glands here at about 19 minutes. Finally going for Zealot Speed at 19 minutes. That is late, Reach. That is extremely late, Reach. He needs to kill this base. I really feel like he does. Another... I don't... I was assuming that Terror wouldn't engage here. But I guess he got some good trades there. There's a bunch of High Templar that died during that particular engagement. The fact that the Zealots don't have legs mean they can't close on top of those Hydras as fast as they would want to. Uh, yeah. That Archon versus the Hydra are going to be a bad thing for him as well. And now suddenly, look who's on the retreat. The reinforcements have arrived for Terror and shut that sucker down. Additional Dragoons cruising on out. They have plus two attack. The Lings are sitting here at two armor and no attack upgrades. Although plus one melee is coming in right now. I see you. I see you, another drop, sneaking over to the right side. Oh, jeez. The drones, though. The drones, though. 
Man, Terror had a pretty substantially big advantage in economy there, just in the number of workers available, but suddenly Terror's down to 41, which is not great. It's still more than Reach is operating with. Reach, man, he's going to mine out of his natural base here very soon. He's only going to have his third base to pull from, and he needs gas, too. He needs gas for these High Templar, for these Dragoons, for any Reavers he produces. Yeah, this game. For a minute there, it felt like Reach had it. But then Terror kind of swung back around, and Terror's feeling a lot better. But then that drop, I mean, this is this is turning into quite a match. Yeah, this is good stuff. If you haven't hit the like button yet, we're at a 20-minute mark in a game where it doesn't really feel like anybody has a significant advantage on the other player. It's a bigger army right now for Reach, but a lot of these are Dragoons, and this Hydro Ling thing... The Terra's going for just absolutely obliterates Dragoons. They're 2-2 two -two Hydras, man. The Zealots have speed. Again, they're closing the distance more effectively now, which is exactly what you want to do. Uh, the Reavers are slow walking across the middle of the map for reasons I don't understand or agree with. Um, are you serious? Why? Oh, I guess there's a shuttle coming over this way. Hang on, we got you guys. Don't you worry about it. What is this up here? Oh, Lurkers. Lurker eggs gonna shut down Reach's third base. Dude, if Reach can't get a fourth, I really, really, really worry about Reach's ability to win this game. This attack is humongous, though. This is really important stuff. The observers avoid getting hit by the Scourge here. This is a lot of Sunkens all of a sudden that we're attacking into, guys. I love the Sunkens here out of Terror. They help defend against the Zealots pretty effectively. They're pretty good against the Dragoons, too. Not as good against the Reavers, but whatever. You gotta do something. He storms the drones during the attack. Terror is supply blocked right now. The attack is still here from Reach. The Lurkers have come back, and they're burrowing, but there are cannons defending that third base, so it's not as good a situation, I think, as Terror wanted to up in that top left-hand corner. These hatches go down. That's a lot of lover production that Terror might end up losing right now. The Reavers getting hits off here, making scarabs as fast as they can. These guys hit really hard. Reach is trying. Oh, the Hydras jump on in and try to snipe off some of these Reavers. And you know what? They got them. They got the Reavers, ladies and gentlemen. So Reach is trying to get a fourth base, all the while doing this attack, because attacking while expanding is what the good players do. Hard to remember to do, but always important to do, nevertheless. That Archon does not get any hits off before he dies. This is getting an epic tag. It is 78 to 71 supply here at 22 minutes into this match. Unloading, for some reason, a couple Dragoons over on this right side base. Uh, sure, Dragoons. I guess maybe that's what you had access to. Why not? You're not going to take down that hatch in any amount of time. And there are Hydras in Overlords coming to murder you, too. The drops in this game have been disgustingly good. Corsairs are just patrolling this area, trying to make sure that no Overlords can get in this direction. Hydras found the fourth base of Reach, though. Where is the purple? Where is the purple to save this thing? The shuttle's got a High Templar in it. Probes are fighting against the Hydras, which is dead hilarious. So keeping this base is a big deal, but the Hydras are coming in to snipe your probes, man. Don't do it. Okay, it's only two. It's only two Hydras. The Archons are going to murder them, but then a bunch of Lings show up, back themselves against the wall, try to avoid getting surrounded. It's a desperate situation for Reach right now. He does have to throw down a storm, possibly ending that Archon's life, but you know what? It killed the Zerg player, too. A des again, a very desperate hold. Oh, no. Free High Templar. Oh, gets a storm off before he dies. That was humongous. That was so important right there. You know what? That's it. Yeah, I was going to say, that's your good game. Reach taps out. And Terror is your winner in 24 minutes and 5 seconds. What an absolutely fantastically nonstop amazing match. That was so much fun. And at the end of the day there, Terror gets the win. Comes out on top. These lurkers, I don't think, did as much as they wanted to. I guess there's four kills on that guy. That might have been Hydra Hydra kills from before he morphed in, though. Yeah. I mean, remember when Terra had a hard time getting a fourth base up? Like, he had the three bases rolling, but getting that extra gas was impossible. Look at him now. He's got this base. He's got this base. He has this base. He held on to this base that he's not actually mining gas from, but it would be nice. And the fact that he was able to kill this 11 o'clock base and this third base... While never allowing really another fourth base to come up here for reach is just 
fantastic. Really, really, really great. I am, oh, oh, so good. That one's getting an epic tag. It is. Man. All right. Well, I don't even know what else to say. The number of bases that died in this game, it's 43 drones at the end of the game for terror. The winning Zerg player at 24 minutes had 43 drones. 43. That's it, man. He was not killing it economically. Nobody was ever killing it economically in this game. But Reach, he had the correct recipe. He had enough High Templar. He had enough of the Reavers. But Terror, just good angles, good target firing on the Reavers, coming in from multiple directions, going for the drops, which are so important when you're trying to kill a Protoss player. Right? So important. If you get the drops, you're going to have a better time against Protoss. I know it's hard, but it's worth it. It is. End of the day. I mean, look at this. 152 to 149. That is a close, close match between these guys. Breach ends up killing 317 units of the Zerg player. But 461 were produced. Both players lost a bunch of buildings, including hatcheries, including nexuses. But Terror, at the end of the day, despite being shut down economically to a certain extent in the early stages of the match, mined more gas, mined more minerals substantially, and ended up spending about 6,000 more resources than the Protoss player did. So yeah, the fact that he was never Reach was never able to get that fourth base really up and running. He never at any time had four bases running at the same time. It felt like uh, that's an issue. That is an issue for their uh, if Terror is running on as many bases as he is. So fun, exceptionally fun. All right. Well, you know what? That's going to be it for me. So <laughs> this has been. Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Root War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.